Hey there future nurses, it's Christine from Nurse in the Making. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about hyperthyroidism. In a different video I talk about hypothyroidism. I also do a video comparing hypo and hyperthyroidism, the signs and symptoms. You definitely want to be familiar with the difference between these two, especially for the NCLEX and for nursing exams. So let's talk about hyperthyroidism, but before we dive into the signs and symptoms, nursing interventions and treatments, let's look at some patho of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a small organ found in the anterior throat right here that is butterfly shaped. And those little dots found on the thyroid are your parathyroid gland. Just like any gland, the thyroid gland has some functions. It helps with metabolism like burning calories. It helps with growth and the thyroid gland produces hormones that give you energy. The thyroid gland produces three hormones, T3, T4, and calcitonin. Calcitonin regulates the amount of calcium levels in the body. It does this by taking calcium out of the blood and pushing it back into the bones. That's more of a side note. You don't really need to know that for remembering the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Another crucial thing to know about the thyroid is you need iodine to make thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. Iodine must be consumed through food. So too much iodine causes hyperthyroidism and not enough iodine causes hypothyroidism. Now that we know a little bit more about the thyroid gland, let's talk about hyperthyroidism and what it actually is. Hyperthyroidism, just like the name, is high secretions of thyroid hormone. It's producing more than normal amounts. The most common cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disease. Let's talk a little bit about T3, T4, and TSH. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. This comes from the pituitary gland, not the thyroid gland. It stimulates the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. Let me explain that in non-medical terms. In hyperthyroidism, the thyroid stimulating hormone tells the thyroid gland, hey, we have too much T3 and T4 in the blood. Stop making it, we don't need any more. So the thyroid stimulating hormone takes a break because there's enough T3 and T4 in the body. So hyperthyroidism, think high thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, and low thyroid stimulating hormone. They're always opposite of each other. So let's look at hypothyroidism. So in hypothyroidism, thyroid stimulating hormone tells the thyroid gland, hey, we're running low on T3 and T4. We don't have enough in the body. So thyroid stimulating hormone heads over to the thyroid gland and helps make more T3 and T4. So the thyroid stimulating hormone gets to work. That's why in hypothyroidism, we see low thyroid hormone, T3 and T4, and high thyroid stimulating hormone. It's stimulating it to make more. This is why they're always opposite of each other. So you'll never see T3 and T4 elevated with TSH and vice versa for low. They're always going to be opposite of each other. Now that we know more about what the thyroid gland does in the body, let's look at the signs and symptoms. If you want a direct comparison of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism back to back, I do an entire video on that comparison. The difference between these two signs and symptoms are extremely important to know for the NCLEX. I said earlier that the thyroid gland gives you energy. So people with hyperthyroidism have a lot of energy. So hyperthyroidism, think hyper signs and symptoms. So for the thyroid hormone, we just talked about this. Hyperthyroidism, think high thyroid hormones and low thyroid stimulating hormone. Have you ever seen a super hyper person? Usually they're running around and they're really flushed and hot. It's kind of the same thing. In hyperthyroidism, these patients are going to be hot they're gonna have heat intolerance. That's why you also will see sweaty skin, but the skin's also going to be smooth and soft as well as soft hair. Because remember, the thyroid gland is responsible for growth. 
As for the appetite and weight, we're going to see an increased appetite and weight loss. Remember, the thyroid gland plays a big role in metabolism, which helps you burn calories. So don't let this one trick you on the NCLEX. Think about it. Think of an athlete who's training and burning lots of calories. They have huge appetites after a game, but they're not gaining any weight. It's kind of the same thing. These clients are so hyper with big appetites, they just burn it right off. So that's why in hyperthyroidism, we see an increased appetite and weight loss. As for the eyes, you're gonna see something called exothalmus. This is bulging eyes due to fluid accumulation behind the eyes. Think excess thyroid for exothalmus. For the GI function, these patients have hyper GI. So you're gonna see diarrhea. For the vital signs, think hyper high vital signs increased blood pressure and increased heart rate. Patients with hyperthyroidism are going to have a goiter. A goiter is an enlarged thyroid gland. Remember, the thyroid gland is producing so much hormone, it's working over time and that makes the thyroid gland enlarged. A life-threatening complication of hyperthyroidism is a thyroid storm. This is an acute, meaning it comes on really fast, life-threatening emergency where there's way too much thyroid hormone in the body. You're basically going to see the same signs and symptoms we just talked about, but on steroids. So think really high temperature, really high heart rate, really high blood pressure, agitated tremors, and delirium. Now let's look at some treatments and medications for hyperthyroidism. You're gonna have anti-thyroid medications, which makes sense because we have too much thyroid hormone. This is such as methomazole or PTU. You're also gonna give anti-hypertensive medications such as beta blockers, since these patients have such high blood pressures. Remember that beta blockers end in olol. Next for radioactive iodine therapy. This actually damages or even destroys the thyroid gland. This is done intentionally because our patients have hyperthyroidism. The thyroid gland is producing too much, so we wanna kinda of calm it down. So after ingesting radioactive iodine, the client secretes, meaning urine, saliva, sweat, radioactive substances from their bodily secretions. So there are some education points you need to teach your patient because they're secreting radioactive iodine, which is not a good thing. So you wanna be sure to limit their contact with pregnant women and children. You wanna use a separate toilet and flush multiple times. You wanna use disposable cups, plates, and utensils. Don't share food or drinks with others. You wanna sleep in a separate bed. Don't sit near others for long periods of time. So when it says like, I'll go on an airplane or I'll go on a train, you wanna educate your patient not to do that. You wanna wash laundry separate from others and don't breastfeed. Clients with hyperthyroidism may also get a thyroidectomy. This is where they take all or part of the thyroid gland out. Remember how I said those little dots on the thyroid were called parathyroid? Well, these can accidentally be removed during a thyroidectomy. They're as small as a grain of rice, so it's really easy to accidentally take these out without noticing. Whenever someone gets their thyroid gland taken out, you always wanna have that in the back of your mind. So be monitoring for hypoparathyroidism. And we know that that manifests as hypocalcemia. So be on the lookout for those signs and symptoms. After a thyroidectomy, you wanna monitor for thyroid storm. And this always confused me in nursing school because I was like, why would we have high amounts of thyroid hormone when we just took it out? But think about it. You're messing with, well, the doctor is messing with the thyroid gland and removing it. During that procedure, thyroid hormone can leak into the bloodstream, causing high amounts of thyroid hormone shortly after the procedure. So monitor for the signs and symptoms we discussed earlier in thyroid storm. We also always wanna have ABCs at the back of our mind. Since the thyroid is in the neck area, we definitely wanna monitor airway status. This is why it's important to have intubation ready at the bedside after a patient has a thyroidectomy. 
That's all for hyperthyroidism. Again, I do a video comparing hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, signs and symptoms so you can see them back to back. So when you get a select all that apply question asking, which of the following are signs and symptoms seen in hyperthyroidism? You can answer these questions with confidence, so be sure to check out that video. There should be a card popping up to watch it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more nursing school help. Happy studying, future nurses.